Good evening. This is Mae Brussel from KAZU FM in Pacific Grove, California. This is broadcast number 581, January 24th, 1983. I appreciate that a lot of important items in the news are going by that we keep up on various programs and update. And you may be wondering why I'm not mentioning them, but I'm going to do this continuous series on the attempted assassination of the Pope. It's just a marvelous script. It's exactly rerun of the people that were involved in all the assassinations that I've talked about, the international connections, the web, and the using the identical people to cover up this assassination attempt on the Pope and divert it, or the murder if they could have gotten away with it, to divert it to this old KGB Russian plot or in the Kennedy assassination to include Oswald from the Soviet Union and Marina from the Soviet Union and Oswald wanting to go to Castro to see, uh, go to Cuba rather, see Fidel Castro. The script is identical and it's exciting. It's just as exciting as if a doctor were making a diagnosis on a very difficult case and had seen a particular case like that a long time ago and applied it and it worked. The names that run through this fabric pertain to the very people, as I say, that we share information with the different researchers around the country and writers putting out books, not making the connecting links, but they do all converge here. And last week, the week before, I mentioned the article in the Village Voice, and last week I spoke about that on the Pope Lumumba and the Kalb connections. That is Madeline Kalb, who's married to Bernard Marvin Kalb and their brother Bernard Kalb. Marvin and Bernard Kalb are brothers. One covers the uh, Washington uh, news with Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon through those terrible, turbulent years from the time that Kissinger is launched into the national scene where he leaves Harvard in the shell of Harvard professor going down almost every week uh, monthly to the Defense Department, the Intelligence Department, working even with the fall of the uh, Mossadegh in Iran, the first attempted coup, uh, coup very early when the Shah was put into power with his, his father was a Nazi during the war, Zahidi and his right hand aides and relatives were Nazis. And Kissinger was in on that and on down when he gets to Washington, the people that travel with him that go to Moscow and China are Marvin Cal, Bernard Cal, one for NBC, one for CBS, one was stationed in Moscow. These, these traveling brothers are amazing. And also the importance of that article that Mr. Coburn has of the Lumumba connections. And I'm going to continue on with that and break down in this one hour, if I can, and continue next week into the Lehman family and the Grace Kelly connections to Kissinger and John Warner with the uh, Edwin Wilson connections. It's a complicated web if you're not familiar with these broadcasts every week for the past uh, six months or a year or year and a half at least. But bear with it and listen to the tapes and play them back over and keep getting the next ones and you'll get what I'm trying to say about the microcosm of this whole conspiracy block being centered at this time on the tr- trying to blame the KGB and the Bulgarian communists for the assassination attempt on the Pope. Now, in simplistic terms, it breaks down if you, uh, so far, the way the news starts, and I mentioned this last week also with you, was that when Ajah was arrested in Rome, he was part of a Nazi gray wolf, um, very treacherous fascist group. They, he had murdered a professor, not a professor, newspaper publisher in Turkey, a leftist, and the far right wing wanted to take over his newspaper, and Ajah was taken to jail. And then he and about 200 people had been released, just as we release our mafia gunmen, such as Lucky Luciano, Murder Incorporated, to go over and work with the intelligence in the United States. This isn't a new pattern, but it's so interesting the way they keep repeating it. They've got a recipe, like your favorite chocolate cake, and if it can't fail, it can't fail. And the only thing that's missing is if they forget a certain ingredient, but people are getting smarter now and can at least duplicate it and and analyze it and study it. And every time they use that same recipe, even in this case, the telltale telephone number of a Bulgarian in his pocket when he's arrested, like those usual diaries you leave around, you can understand the past assassinations and conspiracies 
and how they've worked for a long, long time because the same people are doing them. When they die off, it'll be harder to pull this off. But right now, most people are pretty gullible and they're pulling it off pretty successfully. Now, Aja was said to be a right-wing Nazi fascist. He was linked to those people. He walked out of jail. He went all over Europe and he had a spending fund of like 50000 and he was in the, every NATO country. He did go to Lebanon, but the Christian Falange is in Lebanon. Every Lebanese is in the PLO and the PLO and the IRA are funded by the Vatican, as I said before. So that doesn't mean a thing to be in Lebanon. Our headlines, the uh, New York Times, Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, the LA Times, the papers I take, many of Chicago Tribune. If somebody's been to one country, just like Oswald went to the Soviet Union, he's a communist. If you travel to Russia, you're a communist. The Soviet was infiltrated with CIA and Reinhard Galen's agents that aren't separated. He worked with us, Hitler's chief of intelligence. But to travel through a country in Bulgaria, in spite of it being in the Soviet bloc, is a passageway for the world narcotics traffic that does go into Munich and Frankfurt and into New York City, and it comes from the Middle East going through there. Now, the first reports were that Aja, and these were the accurate reports because leaving the jail and who he worked with and where he grew up, and I'll go into that in detail, those were the accurate reports. Then August and September of this year, all of a sudden there was a new angle, a Bulgarian connection, implying that all of Bulgaria is there, and it's the highly secretive Bulgarian police, and if it's the Bulgarian police, that has to be Andropov, Andropov, the new head of the Soviet Union. Now, Andropov probably has to be one of the most intelligent men in the world, and I mentioned specifically last week how the, they have cut inflation, had full employment, they don't need imports, they're self-sufficient, they've held on to their resources. There uh, has to be some reason to believe that this man who is, speaks languages, which some of the others didn't have, he had the advantage of multi-language. He's a very intelligent man. And how they think they can pull this is, in fact, when I did the program on Ronald Reagan, when Andropov came in and Reagan said it takes two to tango, I said, Reagan has met his master. And for this reason, you don't hear Ronald Reagan his press conference talking about the shooting of the Pope. He was asked about it. And his answer was, I'll let the Italians speak, because he knows that net will pull him out just as Nixon got out of Watergate. He is he will let his people leak, but they're not going very far. But Nixon and Secretary of State Schultz, or George Schultz, they're staying on the cautious side. But the first reports for almost a year were that this man had these Nazi backgrounds. Now, he wasn't going to talk about that. He was promised that he would be rescued like Otto Scorzani was within six months. And at the end of the year, if they didn't rescue him, then he was to pull the Bulgarian story, the communists did it. And in exchange for talking, he'd get out, and he'd get out faster because if the far-right Nazi gun smuggler narcotic gang rescues him, then everyone's on their tail and may bust their narcotics. Now, it turned out that the narcotics gang were busted anyway in Milan just a few weeks ago, and that tied up, again, the Vatican Bank, the Banco Ambrosiano, the gun running, the narcotics with almost a billion dollars, uh, $690 million in one arrest in Milan, and some of that money could have gone, say, to rescue Aja. But the point is, if you're going after Aja, why take the people who the heat is on anyway, particularly since Roberta Calvi was hanging in London and the banks are tied up? I just heard on the news, oh, it was this week, the 10 major banks uh, are about to collapse and several include those northern European countries. They depend on a steady flow of this kind of money and, and a big hunk of an arrest in Milan, Milan that's linked to Ambrosiano to the Aja gang and the International Narcotics Group. They not only can't rescue, but then the heat would be there, so there wouldn't be any point in doing that. Uh, it'd be like if a Black Panther were in jail and Black Panthers tried to rescue him, then they'd go busting and looking and have an excuse to break them up further. So you would use an excuse, which they don't do, which isn't very smart, and say the right wing paid me to do it. This way, he's diverting it now. At the end of a year, if he isn't rescued, then he'll give it a communist connection and come up with names he never saw the people and... Uh, is given pictures to identify and uh, matches one in a crowd who has been seen by other people. You know, as a story, a face in a crowd like Artie Bremer up in Canada, 
You can always pull out a face in a crowd. It may be that person. It may be a double. And the history of espionage is filled with doubles. So the second point, after he was a right wing by August of September, they wanted to show how evil the commies were in killing the pontiff. Now that motive of springing that now goes in to what I won't have time this week, but it goes into the John Lehman Secretary of Navy, Grace Kelly Connections, and Monaco, and the United States echelon of Henry Kissinger and his gang. We'll do that, as I say, I don't think I'll have time this week. Then the third opinion, the other opinion, the Bulgarians did it. Then the other opinion is, we don't know yet. That is Ronald Reagan and Schultz, who are keeping their mouths shut. And in the meantime, as I mentioned last week, separating the United States from the Vatican, because the Pope knows who did it. I, You know he knows who did it. And he's stuck there with his terrible problem, sitting in that Vatican and with Marcinkas locked in the same place with him, even though it's large. It's not large enough for those two right now. So the I don't know yet, I'm not saying we'll leave it to the Italians. Now, the Italian government is split in two sides. One are the Christian Democrats who say there's hanky-panky here, the courts are wrong, uh, we don't believe the Bulgarian, they're very cautious, and I'll give you some of the articles on that. They're playing it cautious. And then the Socialist Party, which don't think it's the communists. It's the socialists like Hitler's socialist party. Hitler was smart. He took the name of socialism and made it communism so the people would think they have their form of socialism as against the uh, Russian communism or a true socialism, such as you get, say, in Canada or Sweden. The socialist party in, in um, Italy is the far right, and the spokesmen for it have said this is an act of war. This is, a, And you see these headlines... And when you read under the headlines, who is saying it, it's act of war is Mr. Craxi, C-R-A-X-I, Bettino Craxi, B-E-T-T-I-N-O, C-R-A-X-I. That is why I mentioned on a tape several months ago that I would spell these names and that they shouldn't be typed up unless the spelling is correct. And this is one of the men whose name was uh, just is an innocent mistake I wasn't spelling was uh, C-R-O-X-Y or something like that. And I said, that isn't good enough or fair when you do all this research because it should be spelled B-E-T-T-I-N-O-C-R-A-X-I. He is the right-hand man of Lysio Jelly, who fled Europe after having his 930 membership or 850, I forget the figures, of the fascist group in Italy and in also including the heads of states in Europe, the notorious Masonic Lodge, which is simpatico and identical to the Opus Dei. And Jelly fled, he fled Europe at the time the war was over because he had headed the brown shirts in uh, Italy for Mussolini and the uh, guard equivalent to the Gestapo. He'd worked for Franco and was in Italy during the war and then went down to uh, Argentine and the British monarchy, the Duke of Kent, the cousin of the Queen of England, coaxed him to come back to Italy in the 50s. And he kept dual citizenship and organized through the monarchies and the fascist organizations the intent to put the monarchies back on the throne and put a fascist dictatorship in Europe. And Croxy was part of the Masonic Lodge. He was one of the first men mentioned in the news. And instead of going to jail and instead of fleeing, Bettino Croxy is giving the propaganda. If you see the articles in the newspaper, I'll give you some. This is an act of war. You have Washington Post has the nerve by Lauren Jenkins. Italy calls the Pope plot an act of war. Evidence points to Bulgarians, the defense chief says. Then you read the defense minister is Lelio Legorio, L-A-G-O-R-I-O. And then down below it, under the leadership of Bettino Croxy, the socialist the second largest party in the four-party uh, coalition. Now, the government changed hands 180 degrees when Jelly fled. He was arrested the same night before Grace Kelly was murdered. He was arrested in Switzerland, drawing $50 million out of a bank, and they picked him up there. They haven't yet put him in Italy. He's such a hot potato. He's drained them about $22 billion in money, and the government still functions as if it doesn't need that money. But Tino Croxy's name is on the front page of the New York Times. Again, like the Washington Post, the Italians socialists accused of ploys. Oh, okay. Now, the, well, the so Christian Democratic Party, as I say, is accusing the socialists. Those are the two main parties in Italy. 
the Christian Democrats, and those are the people that also worked with, uh, they were thrown over because they were funded by the New Ghanaian Bank, by the CIA, by Lockheed. The Christian Democratic Party is hanging in there now, and they're accusing the socialists of manipulating the case against the Bulgarians for internal politic, political advantage. In other words, they want to keep saying, uh, you it goes into, again, the, the bishops that are now becoming anti-war, anti-nuclear weapons, etc., around the world and in America particularly. Under the leadership of Bettino Croxy, this is the New York Times, December 24th, the second largest party, as I say, they are using the story that the uh, Turkish gunman, Aja, who's in jail, worked in the Soviet bloc nation, that he was a Soviet spy. So that name didn't fade away. You see, he's the right-hand man of the Hitler, Mussolini, Franco group. So he is giving the headlines, whoever buys it, and the Washington Post puts it, the Italians say it's an act of war. It, Italy's a big country, just like the United States is a big country. They have tremendous problems because the money was drained out of the country down to fund Argentine's war against the Falklands and to arm Paraguay, and where Mr. Mengele resides, and the Nazi strongholds that are paid well and they live well. It's a country that is split, and when Jelly left, they tried to get their place together and continue, but Craxy is one of the top officials still representing the Lizio Jelly faction. So you have, in August, September this year, Aja and the far-right socialist, it is the Socialist Party, began... The Bulgarians did it. Ronald Reagan and, Sh and Secretary of State Schultz said, we're staying clear, we're not saying it. And then the other evidence that they're sitting on now that the Italian government investigators are going to bond to Frankfurt, Germany, to the banks and the places where Aja was to go into the Grey Wolf Hitler worldwide Nazi organization. They don't call it the Nazi organization. It is, well, they do. They call it the fascist organization. So, and that gets in back again to the Milan banks, the Banco Ambrosiano, and then that makes a full cycle back to the Vatican banks and would be a motive for trying to shoot the Pope because within the past two years, the drug connections and the banking problems have led right back to the Vatican. I have an article here from the Village Voice, January the 20th, 1980, another Marvelous article. I should copy this and make multi-copies for people. It's by Brian Roston, R-O-S-T-O-N, called A Chapter from the Godfather. I had that on a program, or it was on the radio, in 1980, a long time. And I think it was the broadcast right after, one, it was January 26th I had it on. A Chapter from the Godfather Village Voice. And this is about Michael Sedona, the banker for the Vatican, uh, how he in, took money from a holding company, Fosco International Holding Company, the 20th largest bank in, from Luxembourg and Liechtenstein, and he brought 40 million of that and put it in New York so he could buy up the Franklin National Bank. At that time, Sedona was worth between 400 million and 500 million dollars, and he transferred 67 million from the Milan banks and from Zurich and Fosco International, 67 million. And Lizzie O'Jelly took $22 billion of oil taxes and money out of that country. So we're talking about big figures. And this was, there were irregularities in foreign exchange operations and when eight days after the Franklin Bank lost $45 million with Michael Sendona, there were irregularities in the foreign exchange of $40 million in Europe. So you see, this isn't an overnight problem when I say the plans that the Pope might have caught, caught on and the Vatican was in trouble. This long article that was in the Village Voice chapter from Godfather is about our David Kennedy who became Secretary of the Treasury in the United States. Article, this time they're saying Italian uh, newspaper links Michael Sedona with black money. Black money is assassination money. He works with the CIA and with profits from organized crime, the source of his secret funds. That's why it was so disgusting that uh, Coburn, Alice Coburn made fun of Grace being tangled in this web because here's the Vatican banker. The Vatican set up everything she ever had with her arrangements in Monaco. And 
In 1980, they were linking them to killing money, assassination money, CIA money, and transfers of billions of dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars. So this is a long problem. This isn't a new question. And, and so to get rid of the Pope at that time would be great. And if you could have a political coup of blaming the commies, oh, that would be even better. So uh, taking the news as it breaks, and as I say, that magnificent article of Alex Coburn, you have to then go into the biography. I just gave a little bit off the blurb uh, kissing her. I didn't have time even to look up the biography and who's who and all the things that Bernard Kalb and Marvin Kalb and Maxine Kalb have done. What I have to do now is go and find their books and newspaper articles and go through my early John Kennedy articles. I've saved all of them from oh, many, many years, up till Watergate in chronological order, and then there were so many, I put them in file folders. I have to look, well, who produced the movie, uh, which major studio that put down Jim Garrison just a week before he went to trial in New Orleans? Because, see, Jim Garrison had the goods on, uh, he was the one who told me about Clay Shaw working with Reinhard Galen and the Nazis, and the International Trade Mart was the core of the Nazi Center, when John Kennedy was murdered, he was the link to the New Orleans right-wing group. And in that book uh, by Sebedev, Lebedev rather, called Treason for My Daily Bread, it links Martin Borman from Argentine with Clay Shaw and Ruth Payne, who housed Lee and Marina Oswald, and Michael Payne worked for Dornberger, the Nazi war criminal from Punamund. Uh, you see, I've been on the Kennedy thing, as maybe you know, almost 20 years. But the network of these people and the Cal brothers, if they're Opus Day, would explain why they put on a movie to get Clay Shaw and the New Orleans group off the hook. The CIA was heavily involved in trying to stop uh, Jim Garrison's trial against Clay Shaw, and they just about did a pretty good job on that. Now, one story that many of you will appreciate, and I didn't see it headlines, but it was the New York Times, Thursday, September 23rd. Now, that's when the first story of the Aja uh, Soviet Union links uh, came out. And that's when Marvin Kalb produced the movie on television. And it was Marvin Kalb who made it called uh, The Man Who Shot the Pope, A Study in Terrorism. Now, the New York Times had a story right after that, September 23rd, from Moscow. The Soviet Union denied any involvement in the assassination attempt on the Pope, contending the operatives of the CIA planted that story and see Marvin Kalb now has Claire Sterling giving it you know the the pipeline into Kalb from Rome which she's been doing since the Lumumba it says contending the operatives of the Central Intelligence Agency planted the story the official press agency task said they in Washington hoped to throw a stone at the Soviet Union but they threw a boomerang the Soviet statement came after NBC news broadcast called a, The Man Who Shot the Pope, the NBC News, a study in terrorism, saying the Kremlin may have backed the 1981 assassination attempt after the Pope threatened to return to Poland, his homeland. If the Russians invaded to put down solidarity, the independent trade union movement would be crushed, and they thought that because the Pope was Polish that they wanted to stop him from encouraging the trade union so the Soviet Union would come on in. This is what the Soviet Union said. Four anti-Soviet sensations. A task combinator said that the specialists in fabricating foul anti-Soviet sensations had apparently seized upon the assassination attempt despite the conviction of a Turkish right wing for the shooting. Displaying considerable smartness, the specialists composed for the American National Broadcasting Company a provocative show. Of course, there were no and could not be any facts to prove this program. They dismissed evidence provided by NBC as absurd inventions about Soviet agents, about Bulgarian assistants, revolvers, and false passports. In short, it had all the attributes of a cheap detective story. It would have been better. Now, listen, this is the punchline. <laughs> it's great. It would have been better to expose the CIA task suggesting that the agency was behind the killings of such leaders as Patrice Lumumba of the Congo, Salvador Allende of Chile, and Orlando Letelier, a former Allende minister. I mentioned last week that they 
asked us to look into Allende and Letelier. But the important thing about this specific broadcast, their article, they mentioned Lumumba. They mentioned Allende and they mentioned Chile. Now, Lumumba is the subject of the article later that came out by Alexander Coburn that I'm referring to in January 83, the link of the Lumumba murder to Langley, Virginia, the assassination attempt on the Pope to the Lumumba murder, the influence of Cardinal Spellman in ordering John Kennedy to have Lumumba killed. He went to him and said, categorically that Lumumba will never enter Rome alive. Now, usually I talk pretty fast and broadcast pretty fast. It's hard to follow names, but I'm purposely going slow on this because the Lumumba orders to be killed came from Cardinal Spellman and Cardinal Spellman and the Sovereign Military Order of Malta and the Opus Dei are deadly. They Not everybody in there are a deadly organization. And even going back to the Village Voice in 1980 and miles of files that I have. I When I sent this material and worked with Cliff Londecker and the examiner's story, I had the list of eight people and when they were murdered and who was murdered at the time Grace died. It wasn't just that I took it out of a vacuum, as many of you know. And one of them was the hitman for Wilson and Turple who had been in Europe to kill one of the witnesses to the Vatican mafia connections of Michael Sedona and Lissio Jelly and Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan. And he was in an American jail and he was allowed to escape Rikers Island. And he was living uh, at Bucks County, Pennsylvania, not far from where Grace was. And also the former head of Lockheed, the Cortland Gross family, I mentioned many times, were murdered. Those were like backyard neighbors of the main line. And, and Lockheed had begun altering the Italian elections as early as 1947 and into the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They were a conduit of keeping the fascist government alive. Uh, I could go more into the Lockheed again, but that's not important. But the Lumumba murder is being linked to the Pope assassination attempt cover-up and the New York Times September 23rd, that was almost three months ago, said Lumumba. Now, another murder that I keep t talking about, I mean, we could go into two or three hundred political assassinations that are important, but none are more important than the Lumumba, Allende, and Letelier because the people that you have voted into power, your leaders now, are tainted in blood and they should be removed from office. And I have said over and over again, the sponsorship of, uh, say, uh, Henry Kissinger as a world leader if you could pinpoint any one murder that he personally ordered for ITT and for the copper people, just as there's copper in Belgium, Congo, Zaire, and they ordered the murder for copper, uh, the copper for ITT and Anaconda and Kennecott, and incidentally, the Supreme Court justice that Reagan appointed from uh, uh, Arizona is on the board of Kennecott Copper. She's also on uh, part of the copper represents their interests. Yeah, you could figure that out, I'm sure, a long time ago, but look up her holdings and you'll find out Ms. Connor's holdings with copper in Chile. But not to digress too far, if Henry Kissinger is touted as a great American hero, and who is doing the touting of Mr. Henry Kissinger? Nobody better, nobody travels with him better than Bernard and Marvin Kalb. Everywhere he goes, every trip, what do they refer to him as the Henry of Arabia? Oh, Henry, the great man, the second greatest man in the world, the second most powerful in the world. Those are just the covers of their book and these adulations and genuflections. And Henry is a god. He's portrayed as a god. He's a stone killer, and he has been since he was a brat and went in the U.S. Army intelligence from Germany. And they have mentioned the killing of a Yendi because that would knock the belly out of Fritz Kramer and Henry Kissinger and Alexander Haig, who... And, Richard Nixon, who was there at the time doing this. And then Orlando Letelier is an important murder because he was blown up by the team in Washington, D.C., the Chilean ambassador that links to Michael Townley from Ford Motor Company, from the aerospace industry, who's down at Colonial Dignitad, quartering human beings into quarters and throwing them down the river, torturing for the Nazis. There's a new book out on the SS by Infield, that explains a chapter on Colonial Dignitat. And for two, three years ago, I was doing 
programs on Colonia and comparing it to Jonestown, that Jonestown was a microcosm of colonial dignity that borders on Chile and Argentine. And the people that set up this murder of a yen, of Letelier in Washington, again, Edwin Wilson uh, of the CIA, who set up uh, Idi Amin and the torture centers with Mr. Frank Turple and setting all the weapons and torture schools down to Gaddafi in Libya and Carlos doing the multi-killings around the world. The, the Opus Dei and Cardinal Spellman, they didn't like Pope John the Twenty Third. They didn't like Patrice Lumumba, and they didn't like John Kennedy. He pulled back from the Bay of Pigs, and within a short time, all three were dead out. Now I have a full-page picture from our local papers here, August twenty-first, nineteen eighty-two, and I'm sure you can get it at your libraries. Ten p.m. Xerox Corporation sponsors the man who shot the Pope: A Study in Terrorism, and below it's got a picture of the Pope above. And below, an NBC white paper reported by Marvin Kalb. And the Pope and the Kalb on one page. Isn't it great? I'm going to take a one-minute break, and we'll be back with you in one minute. This is May Brussel, KAZUFM in Pacific Grove, California. Good evening. This is broadcast number 581. We do broadcast them at side two. If you tape recorded off the air or have taped cassettes, January 21st and the 24th, I'm sorry, it's not January 24th and it's still 1983, one month gone already, but it's flying by. Side two of the shooting of the Pope, it's very important to take this event that began as a far-right Nazi link, which is it goes back in my research 20 years to the John Kennedy assassination. If the people who were the real researchers, I have a friend in Philadelphia who I've known ever since I began my research, and we have talked about those people that flake off that appear to re be researchers but won't handle certain information. And one of the litmus papers or points of accuracy is how far will they go to the Nazi connections that were apparent immediately when John Kennedy was murdered, the contacts of Lee Harvey Oswald with the right wing, with the military intelligence, with agents of the CIA, with the FBI, the people that he worked with, the International Rescue Committee, George de Morenschild, George Bowie, the whole network at the uh, Jaggers Chile Stovall, where he worked as the printer with security clearances. How many people are willing to face the New Orleans area, the Trade Martin Clay Shaw, and the international Nazis, and the multi connections of him going back and then? passing it off as a Fidel Castro or a Russian conspiracy. And when they couldn't do that, they say, well, he didn't like the East or West or the rich or poor, and therefore he had nothing to live for. Uh, well, they reduce it down. There can't be a motive because he was a mixture of everything. Well, this story of the Pope goes back to that kind of a cover story now, pulling out the Bulgarian communist thing. The only thing that I just can't imagine is why they keep trying to use it. Now, after that broadcast, um, there was an article from Ernest Conine. He he's, writes for the L.A. Times, his columns are in the Houston Post, and he works with the intelligence community. And he had a story, Plot Against the Pope, A Real Who Done It." The real mystery is why it generates so little interest. Well, the left knows it's a lie and probably not true, and they've been smeared a hundred times and don't want to investigate it. And the right wing knows that these stories have a basis going back to the origin of a genre, they're not going to rustle any bit of an in-between. The 90% of the population can't figure it out because there's so many messages that aren't trained to analyze or think in these terms anyway. But this article goes on that the obvious and rather terrifying implication of Soviet involvement was first suggested seriously in September in a Reader's Digest article by Claire Sterling and in the NBC White Paper, since then, the finger of suspicion has come to point more credibly at the Bulgarians and therefore at the Russians. Yet the stories from Rome are being played inside most newspapers and aside from NBC television, hasn't paid any attention. The general public isn't interested. Well, maybe the general public knows, like Mr. Alexander Coburn caught on, that the Cal family are 300% propaganda, ministers of propaganda and liars and covering up. And he's saying, well, there's 580 million Roman Catholics and skepticism is a healthy thing. 
how come more people aren't going into it? You know that if a major broadcasting company came and said, well, May Brussel, we want to do a documentary similar to the NBC, only a different version on your evidence of a right-wing plot, even though it's so much more massive than Claire Sterling, feeding it to Reader's Digest on every newsstand in America. You know, the Reader's Digest is at every Safeway, Monty Mart. I don't know where you buy your food or groceries or drugstores. It's pushed at you at eye level as you go through the paste and you can't miss it. If you don't buy it, you can't miss it. And it is the organ of time and the way time life was and is. People doesn't push that. They they push the personalities, but inside they're subtle. The beautiful people, you know, will have Mrs. DeLorean sitting on a couch with the most angelic embroidered uh, pillow, and she has a special designer for her court appearances, and and changes her image, and they're holding the children and Bible in one hand, and they become the mama papa image, you know, not the jet set, but the goody two shoes. But that's the image they throw at you, very effective. So that Claire Sterling, all she has to do is live in Rome and feed the Lumumba uh, information and what's going on in Africa and so forth over here to Spellman, and then he goes right to the White House, and she feeds the cowboys and uh, gives them the information, and they go ahead with that. The Sanze Mercury had a story November 27th, no sign of international conspiracy found yet uh, that they're looking into it. The Rome magistrate is conducting an inquiry, but they've gathered nothing so far to prove the assassination was more than the work of a few people. There's no nothing to sustain the assertion that it was a result of a conspiracy on an international level. level. The magistrate... Mr. Cudillo, who made his statement in a press conference, was referring to the allegations of Claire Sterling and NBC News, that's Marvin Kalb, on the international terrorism and the Bulgarian Secret Service and the Soviet Secret Service that organized the assassination. And the Italian officials say that there isn't anything yet at all about this, and they're watching it very carefully. They did arrest Mr. Antonov. It, who they said was at St. Peter's Square, but other people said he was elsewhere, and they're going into this, this further. But they specifically mentioned the Kalb-Sterling Network. They didn't mention Kalb, but the NBC program, the Sterling-Kalb Network. And as again, the this Voice article takes it right back to Langley, where I know it is, but keep in mind, but we haven't identified... Uh, Dan Rather and Walter Cronkite, your loved newsman and your top... Bill Moyer was on television last night talking about... Not last night, it was several weeks ago, talking about uh, something that sounded very reasonable about the poor in America and his concern about the world and situations that we've gotten ourselves into. And my daughter was there. We were watching the news. I said, do you know that man? She was rather impressed because we turned to Bill Moyer's subject and he seems like the reasonable man on television. I said, that was press secretary for Lyndon Johnson. He arranged the Dallas cover-up. He arranged the hiding of these connections in the conspiracy. He became press secretary in the White House and built his position on public, national public radio and other radio by being another layer of the news media cover-up, CIA 100% has to be. And one, and whether he's, he's not Catholic because his father's a Christian minister in the South, but Bill Moyer comes on as a reasonable man doing the same deadly minister of propaganda, this insidious thing that is happening. So I will jump back and forth from the Pope cover up and these stories going on right to Kennedy, which is something I know very well. As a matter of fact, in August of this year, when Claire Sterling was putting on her uh, article in Reader's Digest on the Pope was broadcast number 560. That was 21 weeks ago. I was talking about the death of Roberta Calvi in London and how the family of the Calvi said, it was in the Wall Street Journal, August the 19th, said that their father was killed by an organization, the Opus Dei, that was based in Spain, that they suspected that his banking problems began when he mixed Vatican affairs with debts, debts of the Bank of Ambrosiano and the Vatican Bank and that secret money, $1.4 billion of the Vatican's out in Panama that they sign for and won't come up with to match their obligations. They've cleared themselves up with it. And I mentioned on that broadcast, going back to it, 
how the the family specifically mentioned in the Wall Street Journal the Opus Day, and then uh, I also mentioned that in May 1981, when the Pope was shot, the right wing connections, and I said that Claire Sterling, uh, in her Reader's Digest, is pure BS, and offered me to any time and place about Aja's background, and. This is another link to the Kennedy assassination. The Opus Day was tied up, if you have the book, Were We Controlled, with the Bunge Corporation when John Kennedy was murdered. And the Bunge Corporation is headquarters in New Jersey and in Europe. It has to do with the commodities. And the Opus Day worked closely with the Bunge down in Argentina. And the day that John Kennedy was murdered, a large sum of money, billions of dollars profit was made through the Bunge Corporation, several billion dollars in stocks went in cash to Argentine. They sold their stock on the American stock market on the commodities of oil and various uh, commodities that they had. They sold it in the morning. And then John Kennedy was murdered at noon. The stock market dropped, took a licking, but they sold at a high price. And the billions, several billion, went down to Argentine. And Argentine later was linked with Clay Shaw and Martin Borman to the ordering of the murder of John Kennedy through the International Trademark and the Opus Day, So we have Cardinal Spellman on the back of John Kennedy, but you have to kill Castro. The reason they wanted Castro was that Batista was, as mentioned before, was part of their syndicate of the Luciano trademark in Havana, and John Kennedy wouldn't go into Cuba. So the anti-Castro Cubans that set up the assassination team by Robert Mayhew in the United States with the organized crime syndicate could murder anyone in this country, including 130 witnesses to the John Kennedy assassination who knew something or who would speak up. A lot of people say, well, if John Kennedy's been gone this many years, how come uh, people don't speak up? They don't read the obituaries to see the primary witnesses that were off. So getting back to the outline of the Opus Dei, the, another article, this is from Henry Cam, K-A-M-M, is studying these stories for the New York Times. The Pope inquiry, uh, again, similar to the one I had before, finds no international links. The Washington Post and the New York Times did have the story putting down NBC and Claire Sterling by name. This is uh, November 27th, 1982 where they specifically are saying there is no international plot, and that's Marvin Kalb and Claire Sterling. Uh, they're denying this this uh, TV movie and the Reader's Digest, and they're not going along with that, even though those are the two saturation points in the United States that work effectively, the Reader's Digest and NBC News, because then the other stories pick it up from the NBC News, and uh, it becomes a continuous propaganda circle. Now, the act of war is the important, an important part because who is pushing it after NBC broke it? And Claire Sterling in Rome, going back to the Lumumba and uh, John the 23rd and John Kennedy, and here's the Kalb family, the expert Madeline Kalb and Marvin Kalb on that story. Who wants it to be, a, who picks it up from NBC in August and Claire Sterling in the Reader's Digest? And I mentioned to you the New York Times article, December 24th, 19. 82. This is an act, the act of war, and Mr. Henry Cam again is trying to tone down, but mentioning the Bettino Craxi connections. The Washington Post has the act of war, and it's very important that that they use this uh, terminology to think that the world is against our Pope and our leader because he wants labor unions in Poland. That and then the Soviet Union suppresses them. So we want to get World War III going on Polish territory. They did it twice before in Eastern Europe. Let's push it again. Now, Solidarity newspaper had an article in 1981. This was a while back at the time of the uh, Masonic Lodge scandal with um, Lysio Gelli and Bettina Kraxi. They described the Socialist Party leader, General Secretary Bettina Kraxi, at, this is quotations, as the scandal unravels, the United States uh, State Department wants to play down the importance of the Masonic Lodge scandal. The New York Times was pushing for Craxi to replace an Arnaldo Forlani, F-O-R-L-A-N-I. Forlani was forced to hand in his resignation quickly when the government fell, but the New York Times 
also, uh, Mr. Bernard Kalb worked with and does the New York Times as one of their agents for a long, long time. And it was the New York Times that published the Warren Report and gave that first supplement and press interviews just as the NBC did on the Pope shooting. The special 38-page sub supplement or something like that on who killed Kennedy, the final answer, Oswald did this, Oswald did that. They have been accused of being a leftist newspaper, but a lot of people know the difference. New York Times was pushing for Craxi as if it's any of their damn business to become the head of Italy. Craxi was aided by Alexander Haig and Henry Kissinger and Colonel Gaddafi, who wanted to take power, and they wanted him to have the power in Italy, Mr. Croxy, and he still is the voice who sang the act of war. Croxy would become the new Mussolini strongman. The P2 scandal, this is from Solidarity, involves Croxy, and uh, he was brought into the sunlight and forced to be exposed to the Socialist Party when Jelly fled. Now, the P2 leads to the intersection point of financial, political capability, and funds. It protects terrorists all over the Europe. They're secret societies that deploys terrorism at the highest level. And that goes back again to Wilson and Turple. In fact, Frank Turple said on national television he knew Aja, the guy who shot the Pope. And Edwin Wilson, before he came back to the country, was in Rome with the United States officials after the assassination attempt on the Pope, and he knows Aja. So that Croxy is yelling, and the Italian government is yelling, act of war, and those are the people directly linked to the Masonic scandal and the Opus Dei. Another story, the papal slaying bid is linked to Bulgaria, called an act of war. Now that, again, is the Reverend Moon newspaper in Washington, D.C., the New York Times, the Washington Times, rather, that took over the Washington Star. It's owned by Reverend Moon. Italian Defense Minister Lelio Legorio, L-A-G-O-R-I-O, charged yesterday that the attempt to kill John Paul II was an act of war and goes on and said there was evidence that the Bulgarian government in both the papal shooting and the kidnap of U.S. General James Dozier. Now, I said all along and have about a mile of files and never did them on that James Dozier thing. The only thing he said when he got out was that he really liked his captors, but he couldn't stand rock music. And there was no reason to believe he wasn't kidnapped like agent provocateurs like Emily and William Harris in the SLA. Incidentally, you might have read a week or two ago that Emily and William Harris are going to be out of jail in June of 83. He's living in an outside, inside place now. And he's going to work for a legal firm for a man who represented... Um, uh, Russell Little at the trial out here in Salinas, and he's going to be a paralegal. The man who I said worked with the CIA and Time Magazine and the uh, Narcotic Squad in Indiana, William Harris, is going to work for a law office in San Francisco that represents and gets these right-wing, looking, appearing leftist people out of jail. And Emily Harris is going to work for a computer place. They were highly educated people from Indiana that came out to form the SLA to make it look like a leftist group and to smoke out all leftist organizations, which they did a pretty good job, but for all purposes, they're dead now. But the story of uh, Croxy is important and the role of these uh, newspapers pushing the story of the Bulgarian is also vitally important to this because you can break them down to certain uh, power lines and describe who's who in this battle, and they fall consistently with past broadcasts, as I say, that I've done. Now, there was a story by Michael Ledeen in the uh, newspapers last week in the Los Angeles Times. Michael Ledeen is described in the LA Times, a senior fellow in the International Affairs at Georgetown University Center for Strategic Study. Here's the big story. It's the Sunday editorial, uh, page five, Bulgarian Connection Unravels. Evidence mounts of a plot against the Pope pointing to the KGB by Michael Ledeen. And there's a cartoon of the KGB and the CIA making a whisper about this. Now, earlier on a broadcast, I did call the Ledeen Connections. Many of you have it. It's tape 570. That was 11 weeks ago, November the 11th. An article in these times about Michael Ledeen published in September the 8th, 1982. Michael Ledeen is from the State Department and the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the expert on KGB. 
He has direct links to the Masonic P2 scandal. That's the Opus Dei, Delicio Jelly. He represents them and is their minister of propaganda for them. He represents the Italian fascist and the CIA, the Mafia Nazi Network. I said that 11 weeks ago on broadcast 570. Franco Fra- Francesco Pazienza, P-A-Z-I-E-N-Z-A, Francesco, Panzienzi, comma, Roberta Calvi, and Professor Ledeen all work together. They're an entire American thread that risks blowing up a new case inside Ronald Reagan's staff, I announced, you know, several weeks ago. An entirely American thread that blow, is blowing into this case, working on his staff. Now, Lissy Jelly was at Ronald Reagan's inauguration, Michael Sedona, for all purposes, they say he wanted to give a million dollars to Richard Nixon. And uh, Maurice Stan says, well, I didn't accept it. He was the finance chairman of Creep. But the moment the men were arrested at the Watergate Hotel, Stans and the guys went right to water to the offices of Creep and destroyed, burned, and sliced the records of every donor. So why would we believe if Michael Sedona has a lawyer named Richard Nixon why he wasn't funding the Republican Party. If the Secretary of Treasury was Michael Sedona's banking partner, why wouldn't he give a million dollars to Nixon, and why wouldn't they shred those things so fast? Probably the reason to shred it was to break the Vatican connections because in 72 and 73, Sedona was pouring that Italian money, $45 million from the European banks, into the Franklin in New York City that was going to collapse shortly afterwards in 1945. Well, it was 20 weeks ago I was talking about Ledeen and quoted the articles from In These Times when investigating the cycle of money, they discovered bank accounts in Switzerland and links of Italy to the United States to Michael Ledeen. And Alexander Haig and Michael Ledeen worked together with the Vatican, the Mafia, and so forth. So that In These Times had a story about ITT and their satellite station at ITT again, working with Adolf Hitler, arming Hitler, rearming, forming organizations throughout the world after the war. The ITT satellite was on Lissio Jelly's telephone down when he was fled and was living in South America. And on these telephone conversations that were picked up in Europe, they linked the name of Ledeen to Lissio Jelly, who is their representative not only with the Calvi banks that closed, but in Washington, D.C., to Alexander Haig, Secretary of State at the time, and Ledeen, working closely with Pazienza, the, his good friend in Washington. So who is saying it is a Bulgarian connection? Again, it's Michael Ledeen. And these aren't single articles. You see, these are picked up in other newspapers and carried. So we, oh, pardon me, I hit the mic. <laughs> so we have the Ledeen connection a month, uh, two months before uh, he comes out, and I identified him as part of the Lysio Jelly with Alexander Haig. This is one reason Haig had to be kicked out of sec- as Secretary of State immediately after he had arranged the trip to Great Britain for Ronald and Nancy. They wanted desperately to stay at the Queen's house, and they got their way. Um, they be with the British monarchy. But that weekend that I say is so important, in June of 82, uh, the banks were closing. Calvi was hung that week. Uh, Haig had worked closely with the Argentine Lysio Jelly faction that was uh, fighting the Falklands. We couldn't have a Secretary of State with these connections. He had to be taken out of government, and instead he's put into corporations and education centers, the think tank. I mentioned the Heritage Foundation, Princeton University that's building the space stations for genocide, the Alternative 3 route. Uh, can't uh, update you on that. I will soon done many broadcasts on that. And he's with MGM and Kirk Kerkorian. And again, that's Neil Berg and the mysterious hunks of millions that Kerkorian picks up 40 or 5 million in Europe, in Germany. Neil Berg from Western Airlines, the president of Western, left this week. Neil is voluntary, non pay, mysterious trip around the world and comes home with millions of dollars. This goes back to Opus Day controlling studios controlling what you see and networks throughout the various corporations and education centers. So Haig leaves the State Department because of his links to Ledeen and Jelly and the Masonic Lodge and the uh, P2 and the Opus Dei. 
but he covers bases. University is Princeton. The think tank is the Heritage Foundation with Richard Melenskave and Edwin Wilson funds and, and the anti-Soviet propaganda since the end of World War II, uh, continuous but headquartered then after Richard Allen brought the money home from Germany to set up the Center for Strategic Studies over there at Georgetown. So Haig goes to one picture studio, a university, and a think tank, and also was president of the United Technologies, and that is a, another story uh, we could go into. Now, who else are the propagandists? The Bulgarians did it, in spite of all the evidence. You have NBC, you have the Ladine Connection, you have Claire Sterling, of course. So who else, besides the act of war, there's a picture of Richard Pipes. I've mentioned him several times. I'll mention him over and over. December the 19th. 1982, Richard Pipe, shown in the National Security Office, will return to teach in Russia. And it says, departing NSC National Security official mulls the Soviet role in the Washington Post. Now, this is the Washington Post. It's got a large picture of him, and it's carried on to the next page. Sunday, December 19th, a picture of Pipe's with the Soviet role in the Pope plot. You turn to A12, where it continues. Departing national security aid points to KGB ties in Bulgaria. I mean, these are like one-inch black lines. I don't, don't mean you can't miss that. is isn't like the one where the Soviet Union saying, why don't you check out Lumumba, Allende, and Latelier? You have to look on page 48 at the bottom of the page to find that one. But the Bulgarian thing, Pipes, now Pipes can leave the White House and talk about it, another story, and drop-off role in Pope shooting is traced. Isn't that wonderful? Associated Press, San Francisco Examiner, December the 19th. Richard Pipes will be returning to Harvard, leaving the staff of the National Security Council, said in a television interview, it's certain that the Bulgarian government, it's almost certain, is involved in this. In such cases, you never know whether the evidence will stand up in court because intelligence services, intelligence services don't leave trails behind. They don't sign documents. But it seems to me the evidence is strong. Of course the intelligence doesn't leave signs behind. You don't see any signs. Well, you do see paths. If you look one month into the John Kennedy murder, you can find the hand of Langley. The minute they put Alan Dulles on the Warren Commission and Alan Dulles had been fired by John Kennedy as having a secret government behind his back, and you put John J. McCloy from the Chase Manhattan, who was the head commissioner of Germany, who took all the Nazis out of prison and released them to get their funds going again, like Hallmark shocked and and uh, the whole team of Nazis he released. It. John McCloy's career goes back to uh, being the one to lock up the Japanese in the internment camps at the time of World War II. And now there's a they're going to give a resettlement fee of millions of dollars to those people in California. We're going to Dole out money for them for having interned them. Californians in debt. John J. McCloy, who's still alive like Herman Apps, he doesn't dish it out of his pocket. He says, lock him up. And then years later, he says, hey, taxpayers, you better pay him for this. You know, we locked him up, but it's your job to pay him. So we have Mr. Pipes with on television, interviewed by all the stations. And who else? Who else is behind the KGB story? The picture of Henry Kissinger. Kissinger blames the KGB. Uh, this is in the newspaper this week, January the 1st. They picture Henry Kissinger. No other conclusions. Well, Henry Kissinger and the Marvin uh, Cow family going way back and Claire Sterling and the Reader's Digest. This covers a whole area. You see, this isn't just an isolated instance. That's why I say that Fritz Kramer is so important because he directs, and this is acknowledged, he is the Geppetto, the guy who holds the puppet strings. That This puppet has three strings it's Kissinger and Haig, and now it's Sonnefeld. Well, he always was in the Pentagon, who's in charge of looking into the MX positions. We'll do more on that soon. Henry Kissinger says the accounts on the assassination and attempt. Here's a Turkish terrorist who suddenly shows up in Bulgaria, which is not the normal thing for a Turk to do. Now, isn't that analysis? This is the great thinker of the world. He suddenly, this is his evidence. He suddenly, in Bulgaria, which a Turk doesn't do. How many Turks are in Bulgaria today? I mean, what, what does he get this? That's not a normal thing for a Turk to do, to go to Bulgaria. He lives in the best hotel in Bulgaria, 
Didn't Artie Brammer stay at the Waldorf Astoria and the Marriott Hotel and an expensive hotel in Canada, a ne'er-do-well, hadn't worked for a year, family, family impoverished. He shoots uh, Wallace at the time that uh, Richard Nixon has asked Wallace not to run and, and break off the Republican votes. He needs all he can get. Wallace won't do it. So in Laurel, Maryland, he's shot in May of uh, 72. I mean, why can't you stay at the best hotel? Didn't all of these people? He travels all over Europe. It cannot happen without Bulgarian secret police. You can't travel all over Europe with a CIA budget of $22 billion a year. You can't travel over Europe. The guy has 55000 It's nothing to say, as I read somewhere, that there may be something that got away at the higher levels. This does not happen in Bulgaria. It had to be the Soviets, Henry Kissinger says. Here's the logic of the Harvard professor. It has to be the Soviets. In this case... Here's a Polish pope who threatens he'll go to Poland and oppose them. That would be a formidable uh, operation for the KGB. It had to be them. So Mr. Pipes and then Henry Kissinger come in, and the Soviets had to have a sign. And then that story is wire serviced all over. And I'll give you then the, the, Jew, the Jews have to get into the act. Israel believes Italy's claim of a KGB Bulgaria plot. This is a country not recognized by the Pope, but they recognize the PLO and Arafat. This is a country that Alexander Coburn identified with Menachem Begin. It's, it's history. It's there if you want to see it, working with the Mussolini brown shirts, working in Poland with the Nazis and the anti-Semitic Poles. He was arrested, Mr. Begin, remember, by the Soviets, not by the Germans that came into Poland. So Israel is now lining up. It's a Bulgarian KGB plot. I've questioned the people in power in that country for a long, long time. So isn't it interesting with Mr. Pipes and Henry Kissinger and Clara Sterling and Mr. Marvin Kalb of the Opus Day that the Israeli press says that they actually believe that the KGB was in the attempt to shoot the Pope. If they're going to do this thing, the Bulgarians would do it. And the, those are the news stories out of Israel. Thoroughly disgusting. Our time is up. I am spending a lot of time, as I say, on this subject. I'm going to do one more week or two more weeks on it and then get caught up on the other news that has been taking place. But this is so terribly important. And even if I go back to certain items here, I want the the way the propaganda is thrown out now, if you can see it and apply it to everything that I've said before, then these other cases in the future and the past will become clear to you because these are the same people operating, the same modus operandi, but I think they have a boomerang, like the Soviet Union said, and maybe it'll be time to call a halt to some of the things they're doing. This is Mae Brussel on KAZU-FM, emanates in Pacific Grove, California. I'll be back with you next week. Pulled the wool over other eyes for so long. I don't, see, I don't think they'll get away with it is ridiculous. And the fact that the Soviet Union mentions three murders go into Lumumba, Allende, and Letelier, that would pull these rats out of our government and get some course of normalcy if such a thing were possible. But again, the time is up, and I have to stop now.